you say about me that I can be free, that I can be called your own? Help me believe what you say about me. Good morning. My name's Pastor Paul. And I'm Stephen Stack. And we want to welcome you this morning to Transformation Church. Whether you're with us online or you're in the building, we want to say thank you for joining us for this next uh, sermon in the series, Holy Habits. Today, we're going to be talking about royal priests are shaped by Scripture. Very good, very good. And I actually got some great news. Membership classes are back. So September 16th and 23rd is when they'll happen. It's on online only. So if you're thinking about taking that next step, please sign up and you can register on our website or using the app. That's right, Stephen. And we're looking forward to seeing you in those classes. Also, if you're already a member, and you're looking for opportunities to serve, I wanna encourage you to check out our TC Kids. Many of the parents know that we didn't have an opportunity to meet today because we're short servant leaders. If you'd like to do that, then I encourage you to go online or send an email to any of our leaders in that area. And want to make sure you know that Christine Kane will be speaking next week. You don't wanna miss it. Uh, she's a wonderful woman, an author, an international speaker, and an activist. She does a phenomenal job of communicating a message of hope. She has a heart for the lost, and she champions the cause of justice. That's right, Stephen. Can't wait to hear. And if you haven't listened to our other two messages in this Holy Habit series where Pastor Derwin and Vicki shared, we encourage you to go online and check those out. 
Well, now it's time for us to get together with those online and those in the building to worship. So let's all stand together and join our music team. Good morning, family. It's so good to see you all this morning. Um, whether you're in the room or watching online, I want to welcome you personally. Um, it's just amazing to have you guys with us today. Let's stand and worship um, and give God glory. Amen.
into light, that we have an opportunity to, to leave the darkness behind and step into the light of your truth and your love. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you so freely give that to us this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, it is so good to see all of you in the building this morning. And if you're watching online, we're so excited that you're tuned in with us as well. Um, if you are in the building, you'll notice on the back of your seats, um, there's a QR code that we would just love for you guys to scan with your phones. This is just a way for us um, to get to know you a little bit more. Our goal is not to spam you. Our goal isn't to, to be annoying, but it's truly just to get to know you because we actually care about you as the body of Christ. We actually want to be intentional with you. We want to love you. So um, if you're watching online, you'll see a QR code pop up on the screen. You'll just take out your phone and go ahead and scan that. Um, and again, we're just so grateful that all of you are here this morning. We know that um, times are not easy, that, um, that there's heaviness, and it's, it's just amazing that, um, that you guys choose to continue to want to worship, worship together as a body. Um, so let's continue that worship with reading this scripture. And today we're reading um, Psalm 34, verse 17 through 20, and it says this. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. He saves those crushed in spirit. One who is righteous has many adversities, but the Lord rescues him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Jesus, we thank you that in our brokenness, you hold us together. We thank you that, that even though we may be crushed in spirit, you're a God who, who sees us in that and doesn't turn away. But God, your word says you are near to the brokenhearted. You are near to the brokenhearted. That means that, that we're going to have broken hearts sometimes. That means that we're going to go through pain sometimes. But God, I thank you this morning that you are Emmanuel. I thank you this morning that you are good, that you are righteous, that you are strong in my weakness that you are God over the flood, that you are seated in majesty, that there is nothing in this world that can ever remove you from your throne. And that is your dwelling place, Jesus. So we thank you. We thank you, God, that you don't fall off of your throne. We thank you, God, that in our brokenness, you're not looking at us intimidated by all of the things we're going through, but you are actually near to us. That alone is a reason to give you praise today, God. You are worthy of adoration. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy to hold your name. Jesus, we love you so much and we worship you. Amen.
Lord Jesus, you do deserve all the glory. We thank you that you are so different than us. Burdens that are too heavy for us to carry, you say, I'll do it. A future that's so hard to know, you say, I know. Miss Anna, would you uh, graciously lead us about the God of our future? And would you let this be our prayer? Because um, with all the things that are happening, and uh, I know there is unspeakable hurt and pain that people are going through on multiple levels. Uh, we don't know what people brought into this service. Uh, watching online. And so as we, as Anna leads us, this is, this is our prayer. Um, I'm praying that in your anxiety, God rains buckets of peace. I'm praying that in your brokenheartedness, God rains buckets of grace. I'm praying that in your confusion, God brings and rains buckets of clarity. God of my future, you write my story. You hold it all together. God of my present, God of my future. Here on my story, you hold it all together. God of my present, God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together. God of my present, God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together. God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together. God of my present, God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together. You hold it all together. Oh, I can trust you to hold it all together. You hold it all together. You hold it all together. Lord, that's our prayer. You hold it together. You hold it together. You hold us together. You, you hold the universe together. You hold our situations together. You hold our circumstances together. Your grace is efficient. Your grace is efficient, Lord. We bring ourselves to you. We bring ourselves wholly to you as we are, knowing that you hold us together. The difficult circumstance, you got it. The pain we feel, you got it. The disenfranchisement we feel, we got it. Our vulnerability, you, feel, you got it, Lord. You got it. You hold it together. That's our confession. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. Can we give our music team a round of applause for leading us to the throne of grace and mercy? All right. Well, welcome. I want to welcome all of our guests that are tuning in and on uh, here physically. Can we give a Transformation Church welcome to our guests? Thank you so much. And let's give it up for the mighty men and beautiful women of our Correctional Facilities Partnerships and to the TC family. So good to to see everybody. So we are in week three of our brand new series, Holy Habits. Now, depending upon what background you come from, 
The word holy, if you come from a Christian background, could mean women don't wear makeup. It could mean that women can't wear pants. Uh, Let me pause here. In fundamentalist religions, whether if it's Islam or fundamentalist uh, religions like Christianity, why is it always that women are the ones who have to carry the buck? No, seriously. It's like, women, you can't wear this because men will lust. That's his fault, not her fault. No, seriously, that's, that's like wrong. That's idolatry to go, well, what you're wearing is making me lust. No, you have the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. One of them is self-control, that we have the ability to control ourselves. So, but the, but, but, but the word holy, um, it, 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 it means set apart. It, it means utterly different, that, that God is utterly different from us. And what is the difference The Bible says that God is love. And love is not just gushy and mushy. Love is I desire what's best, even in difficult circumstances. And God is saying that that, 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 that when you are adopted into my family by faith, I share my holiness with you. I I share my presence with you. I, I share my love with you. So understand this. God is not waiting for you and I to become holy because if he was waiting, that would never happen. God didn't wait. God came to us. And God says, I'm gonna make you holy by my holiness. I'm gonna share my life with you. I'm gonna set you apart. I'm gonna give you The difference, and the difference is Jesus himself. The difference is the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we want to develop holy habits so that we can be holy, loving people. Never forget this. The way you and I love or the way you and I don't love not only affects us, but it affects those we're in relationship with. And so our spiritual maturity, our selflessness, our compassion makes other people's lives better or worse. So that's why we want to develop holy habits. Habits. Uh, Let me give you a quote here from an author by the name of James Clear. He's written a best-selling book called Atomic Habits. And this is a really good quote. He says this, success is the product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformations. Um, Now, if you are a high schooler, if you are Gen Z or younger millennial, this is really, really important. We live in an instant world, right? Uh, We live in an Instagram world where you can put a filter on and make yourself look so much better than we actually look. And it's so important for us to understand that these are daily habits that we grow in. Uh, Let me give you an example. And this is from my former life of, of a long time ago. You know, God used football in amazing ways in my life, not only to play the game I love, but to come to know him. And so the position I played was called safety. So right now, I can tell you how a safety is supposed to stand in a game. Let me, let me say we're just playing cover two. You don't need to know what that means, but there's a particular body posture. And so what, what you do is you get here and immediately my weight is on the ball of my front foot. You're like, why does that matter, Pastor Derwin? Because I have to push off. Now, if my weight is on my heel, I'm gonna do this. And if I do this, guess what happens? A receiver that's really fast has already beat me. So one little step, I gave ground if I didn't push off. Then next, I got proper bend and my gluteus maximus, which, you know, which is my butt, that's the steering wheel. That's the steering wheel. Because if it's too low, I can't move. If it's too high, guess what I'm gonna do? He's gonna go by, because I'm gonna fall down. And so you have to have this posture, and for some reason, you always gotta do your fingers like this. I'm not sure why, but, <laughs> but, but you just have to. But notice this, I have been doing this since ninth grade. It became a habit. It became a habit. And God wants to develop holy habits so that when you and I get in the game of life, we ain't even gotta think about it. We already, ooh, we already, my back feeling good too. We already ready to play. We're already in position and posture. For some of us, because we haven't developed holy habits, we're on our heels or we're too low. And God is saying, I wanna mold you and shape you that it becomes automatic. But here's a question though. Teenagers, what what exactly is success? Is success having a great job? It could be. Um, Is success making a ton of money? It could be. 
But Jesus said these words, what does it profit a man or a woman if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? So the way we define success here at Transformation Church is the way Jesus defines success. 2,000 years ago, a religious leader asked Jesus, what's the most important commandments? And Jesus said this, love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. The way we say it here is upward, inward, outward. So in response to God loving us, in response to God's mercy, in a response of God pulling us out of a pit, what do we do? We love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Now watch this. We love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And the most difficult part for all of us is loving ourselves. And here's why. Because we think that loving yourself means arrogance, when actuality, loving ourselves biblically means this, all that who I am is found in Jesus. Um, I don't deserve him, but he gave me grace. Um, Lord, you know all my failures. Lord, you know all these things, but yet you declare me righteous, but yet you declare me a friend, but yet you declare me forgiven. Those are things I didn't earn or achieve. Those were gifts that I received. And what happens is your hearts get softer and then you grow in humility that moves you into the world to love your neighbor compassionately. The word compassion means to suffer with. So you know what success looks like? It looks like as you go into the world, as you go into school, upward, inward, outward is happening. You are loving people because God so loved us. Typically, we think success is other things and God is going to know I have a greater success. So um, I got some ideas and, and I kind of jotted this down. This is a familiar framework and I just added courage because every action we take, every habit we develop in order to get to impact, and all of us wants to make an impact, it starts with thoughts. The scene of the crime is your, the scene of the crime is your, so never forget this, your thoughts are not your mind. Your thoughts can come from your mind or it could also be demonic influence. We don't have to act on our thoughts. We're not held prisoner to our thoughts, okay? We want to sync our mind with God's mind through God's word so that our thoughts will follow after this pattern. But here's the, here's the thing. Once we have the thought of what's right, ooh, y'all, in the words of Martin Lawrence, woo, woo, woo. Oh, this is where it gets hard, courage. The courage to do the right action. The courage to have a hard conversation. Friends, don't avoid hard conversations because if you do, that avoidance gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It, it takes courage to do the right thing, teenagers, listen, when it's unpopular. It takes courage to do the right thing when people may not understand. It takes courage to put God's words into action by his spirit when it's hard. So you got thoughts, courage, then you got actions, and all of a sudden those actions become habits. And then a habit leads to character. Character is who you are when no one else is looking. And character leads to impact. All of us are going to leave an impact in the world. Um, I bet you've never heard of Mrs. Terrell. Uh, Mrs. Terrell was my second grade teacher at Ira Ogden Elementary School on the west side of San Antonio, Texas. Only thing I remember about Mrs. Carroll, because it was a long time ago, is she had black and gray hair, and she wore the teacher glasses and a long ponytail, and she had to be 219 years old. But there's not a year that goes by that I don't think about Mrs. Terrell. How many teachers are in the house? If you're a teacher, raise your hand. If you teach, raise your hand. Put them up, put them up high. We want to celebrate you. We want to applaud you. We want to thank you. Um, just like um, parents and, and, and kids in school with COVID and teenagers and teachers, I don't know how you're doing it other than the grace of God. So I want to 
applaud that, and I think that that is beautiful. But I want to encourage you teachers with this. What if the most important thing you ever do, and for all of us, what, is the, what if the most important thing that you ever do is make someone else famous? That's a good life. And so you may be in the shadows, you may be unknown, but God sees and God knows, and people's lives are being touched by you, not just teachers, but all of us. But in order to have that type of impact, we have to develop holy habits. Now, holy habit number three is we are the Bible-shaped people of God in Christ. We are the Bible-shaped people of God in Christ. Now, when I say Bible-shaped, that's really specific words, is that we want the Bible to shape how we navigate and move in the world. The Bible is very, very important. The Bible is a big book. It's actually 66 books. The Bible is actually a library of 66 books, okay? Now, that can be overwhelming. When my wife and I first began to read the Bible, and we were not Christians, we were like, Genesis is pretty cool, the flood, there's some good stories. Uh, we went through Exodus, we were like, whoa, man, God ain't playing with Pharaoh, that was pretty cool. And then we got to Leviticus and said, now wait, what? And we're like, we're done. So we're not gonna encourage you to go that route, but just understand that we understand that it is incredibly challenging. Ah, but this book, this isn't gonna be one of these messages where I try to intellectually prove that this is the word of God. We've done that in the past. We will do that again, but this is a message on, we want you to fall in love with the Bible because the Bible points to the God of love who wants you to know him and who wants you to be loved by him so that you can love him back. We want you to fall in love with the God of scripture. Now listen, Netflix may be one of the greatest inventions in the history of, wor of the world besides the tire, okay? So I deal with a lot of stuff like many of you, and so I like to zone out. I love sci-fi movies and stuff, and so I get on Netflix, and I'll binge and sci-fi, and I like zombie movies too. I'm not quite sure why, but I guess just to survive, but nevertheless, um, there's a lot of things that we binge on. I, I hope we start binging on the Word of God. I, I hope we start binging on the Word of God. Okay, so this was in the early 2000s. Hadn't been a Christian very long. And getting a physical every year is important. And one year I got a physical and my doctor said, hey, there might be some stuff going on with your liver, so let's do some further tests. I was like, okay. Now, I'm not recommending for young athletes to do this at all. As a matter of fact, I say, don't do this. But towards the end of my career, my body was so beat up that even for practice, I would have to take a pain pill called Toradol. I didn't have to, but I chose to knowing potential damage could take place because I wanted to play. I was willfully doing that because I wanted to play and I wanted to keep my job. Was it the smartest thing to do? No, it was not, but that's just what I did. And so when the doctor said, you may have some liver issues, I'm like, oh, the piper has come to get his pay. That when you have wrecked your body and the other human beings for a long time, payday is gonna come. And it ain't the kind of good payday, it's the bad pay payday. So I'm going, oh my gosh. So I fly to Florida and my doctor calls me and this is in the early days of ministry where I would travel around the country and drive and get there and they'd give me a t-shirt and a coffee mug and say, good job. So please understand this, if, if you are young in ministry, I didn't one day just step on this stage, right? Like it's been a lot of years of traveling, speaking in front of four and five people. Mike Square, like you remember, I'm preaching at a basketball game in a microphone, yelling at folks. It was awesome. Maybe not, but anyway, here's my point. I'm in Florida, and I've got to go into the jungle where this camp is, and the doctor tells me this news. And where we were, cell phones didn't work, so I couldn't call my wife. My wife's my best friend. My wife's my rock. My wife is my confidant. But I could call Jesus. And so that night, not knowing how much more time I had to live, 
I just put the Bible near my chest and I got in a fetal position. I just cried myself to sleep with the word of God. That, that, that regardless, he rose from the dead, I will too. Regardless, all things work together for the good of those who love God and called according to his purpose for whom he foreknew he predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. Then no matter how I feel, that's true because the word of God is true. So that's how I fell asleep. And when I woke up the next morning, there was this conviction that, okay, you don't know how much time you have left, so you and your wife better get to planting this multi-ethnic, multi-generational, mission-shaped church, which eventually would become Transformation Church. This book taps us into the heart of the God that loves us and the God who calls us. Check this out. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says this, all scripture is inspired by God is, and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It connects, it, it, it corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Oh man, for some of us, particularly in our culture and even for me, like that one, that part, like the first part's good. You know, tell me what's wrong, and it's like, eh, but you got to do what's right. God uses it to do what? To prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And so this scripture, God's word, has a shaping purpose to it, and God wants us to develop the holy habit of spending time in it daily. So Watch this. How are we shaped by scripture? I want to give us three practical steps, whether if you're in middle school or whether if you're 80, whether if you've walked with Jesus for a long time or whether if you're just beginning, I want to give us three practical steps. Number one, daily, we join all those who've gone before us in celebrating the God-breathed inspiration of the Bible. Understand this. Transformation Church is a small speck of dust in the big church of Jesus. And the church of Jesus didn't just start in the book of Acts. According to Ephesians 3.10, the church of all people in Christ is God's eternal purpose. And so our history actually extends beyond time and will go beyond time. So, so we're a part of this long historical thing with, with brothers and sisters in, in Nigeria and, and Turkey and Afghanistan and Fort Mill. And so we join in this historical, long tradition of appreciating the epicness of God's word. Watch this. I want to introduce you to one of the heroes of the faith. His, his name is Irenaeus. He was born in Turkey a few years ago, 130 AD. And this is what he said about scripture. And, and he went on to be a bishop or a pastor of an area of, that used to be called Gaul, which is France. And he said, said this, we should be most properly assured that the scriptures are indeed perfect. Now, the scriptures are perfect, but my interpretation and your interpretation is not. And so we have to have intellectual humility and curiosity to always learn. Since they were spoken by the word of God and his spirit. A few weeks ago, we were getting ready to take our son, Jeremiah, to college. He's 21, he's a junior, but man, it's still hard. So if you're a teenager getting ready to go to college in a few years, if you are in college, would you allow us as parents just to be sappy? This is a hard time for us, man. It's tough. Seriously, like these people you care for your whole life, and then they just, they gone. And so, you know, uh, he's getting ready to leave. We got like a week left with him, and I'm starting to get sad. And um, I look down at an area where I save important things, and I find this letter from 2003, and it's from my grandmother. My grandmother passed away in 2006. My grandmother and I were incredibly close. My grandmother stood in the gap. Matter of fact, is there any grandmamas 
and granddads that are standing in the gap and taking care of kids and loving kids. If that's you, just raise your hands right where you are. Can we give them a round of applause? Because ain't nothing like a grandmama and grandfather's love. And my mom and I have a beautiful relationship, but man, my grandma, right? And so I found this letter, and I'm just going to read a little bit of this. This is from October 5th, 2003. Hey, Dewey and family. Dewey's my nickname. Uh, thanks for the gift of love. Tell Vicky thanks. Well, son, I'm feeling pretty good today. She was battling cancer, and she was not going to the doctor. She was making me smuggle cigarettes to her in hospice. Uh, God has lifted the, my burdens, and I don't cry or worry any longer. We're all doing pretty good, just the usual things that most people have to deal with in life. And, and, and as I read you that, guess what I hear? Her voice. I smell her smell, her tenderness when, when no one was encouraging me. Senior year, I didn't think I was going to get a football scholarship. I had read something in the paper. It didn't mention my name. I was like, it's over. And she was like, baby, it's going to be all right. Listen, when grandmama say, baby, it's going to be all right. Baby, it's going to be all right. Well, when I think of this letter, it is a love letter that reminds me of her. Well, God has written you and I a love letter for us to be reminded of who he is. And he wants you to hear his voice through the power of his son. Listen to this. First Peter, I'm sorry, Second Peter chapter one, verse 20 and 21. Above all, you know this, no prophecy of scripture comes from the prophet's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by the will of man. Instead, men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The biblical doctrine of an inspiration simply means this in common language. God took multiple authors over multiple centuries, used their time, used their experiences, used their context to communicate through them his perfect word of God. That this is a book that we can trust because Jesus is the truth and the truth will set us free. And God is saying, I want you to commune with me. I want to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with you. He, 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 he wants to talk to you. He, he wants you to hear his voice. My grandmother is in his presence uh, uh, her body is physically dead. Our Lord is alive. He is alive and well. He is on his throne, and he wants to have coffee with you every day. He wants to talk to you. He wants to share his heart with you. He wants to share his will with you. He wants to share his purpose with you. All Scripture is inspired by God. Number two, number two. Daily, we read the Bible knowing that the Spirit of God is forming Christ in us through the Bible. So let's, so let's pause here. Reading, reading the Bible is not a, um, a natural thing. Not like, you know, you go to English class and you read Shakespeare. No, this is a supernatural transaction where the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have the Spirit of God in you, and the Spirit of God is ministering to you. The Spirit of God is calling you to respond to Jesus and the Father. The, the, the Spirit of God is what allows us to apply what God is saying to us. The way Dr. Tony Evans, one of my heroes and mentors, says is this, when we get in the Word of God, the Spirit of God transforms us to the Son of God for the glory of God the Father. There's a transformative effect that takes place. So this was probably 2000, I don't know, three, four. It was the early days of ministry. My, Vicky and I had a ministry called One Heart at a Time Ministry, which meant I travel and spoke. I spoke anywhere, gymnasiums, rodeos, prisons, anywhere they wanted to hear the gospel. I had a microphone and went. Vicky organized it and and we would go, and at this time, Presley was really small. Jeremiah was really small. So basically, I would get home after being celebrated for preaching the gospel, and she was at home being terrorized by children. 
And so I'd get home, hey, how you doing, honey? Hey, I'm gonna go upstairs and uh, get me a bowl of vanilla ice cream with pecans, put a little bit of milk in there, stir it, stir it up, and go watch TV, because I've been out preaching the gospel. And if you know anything about my wife, Vicki Gray, that did not go so well. <laughs> she was like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Nah, I don't work like, 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 like that. So, so we got into a little bit of argument. So I called my mentor, the man who, who, who taught me a love for scripture. His name is Alan Bacon. And I called him and I laid out my case of, of why it was okay for me to eat vanilla ice cream after she'd been chasing kids around. And, and as I'm laying out the case, he, he stopped me and he said, Derwin, what does Ephesians 5.25 say? Because we memorized it. I said, oh, Ephesians 5.25, it says this, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And then he said, uh, we memorized Philippians chapter two, verse three, that says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but consider others better than yourself. So in light of what are you telling me, and in light of scripture, who's right? By the way, who in your life speaks to you that way? Be careful if you don't have anybody in your life to speak to you that way. Be careful if everybody in your life tells you everything that you want to hear. That's not really a true friend. A true friend will tell you what you need to hear even when you don't want to hear it. He loved me enough to tell me the truth of what it meant to be a husband, what it meant to be a father. And he said, Derwin, if you going out and preaching makes you too tired to clean diapers, to wash dishes, to love your wife and to serve your wife, then you preaching the wrong message. You need to preach up in your house. And from that moment on, our marriage is our first ministry. I was like, yes, sir. I didn't like it, but it was true. In week one, we looked at how Jesus defeated the devil. Jesus could have sinned, y'all. In his humanity, Jesus could have sinned. Hebrews 4 says we, don't, we have a high priest who can sympathize with us in every single way. Jesus could have sinned, but he didn't sin because he walked in the power of the Spirit, and look what he did. When the devil attacked him, but Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say. On the count of three, would you read with me those last three words, the scriptures say? One, two, three, the scriptures say. So Jesus, if Jesus needed to use scripture to defeat the devil, what must we do? The scene of the crime is your mind. If the devil can get your mind, he'll get your heart, he'll get your actions. If Jesus can get your mind, he'll get your heart, he'll get your actions. People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I'm hungry. I didn't eat this morning. Hey, hey guys, can, can y'all bring my breakfast really quick? This, this won't take long. Uh, we got plenty of time. The Baptists are already out. The Methodists been out. <laughs> Presbyterians, I don't know what they did today, but uh, thank you so much. So I'm going to you know, some of y'all looking at this biscuit like, oh my gosh, he's eating carbs. Yep, I sure am. And, you know, eggs with the protein. Got the protein. Now, listen, I don't know where you are with bacon, but I hope you know bacon well. <laughs> now, one of the greatest things that ever happened in the history of God's people is God told this Jewish man, Peter, don't call unclean what I call clean. Get up and kill and eat. Go eat some bacon, man. Can you imagine when Peter was hanging out with the Gentiles? They're like, Peter, <laughs> I'm about to rock your world, man. Taste this. Mm. You know what Jesus is doing here, guys? He goes, the same way you need food to live physically, you need the word of God more. Question, are you spiritually malnutritious because you haven't been eating the word of God? Honey, you know what the ancient rabbis would do? The ancient rabbis from over a thousand years ago, when they were teaching little Jewish boys the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, they'd be like six, seven years old, is they would get honey. They would 
He would pour it out. And before the rabbi began to teach, he would tell all the little boys, come and dip your finger in the honey. Mmm, taste and see that it's sweet. And then he would read this scripture. How sweet your words taste to me. Matter of fact, some of you mom and dads may wanna do that yourself, right? How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. But here's why they're sweet. Don't miss this. Here's why the words are sweet, why God's word is sweet. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Do you see that? God is going... When you see that my word is sweet, what's going to make it sweet is not necessarily its taste, but what it produces in you. All of a sudden, you're going to begin to hate things you once used to love. All of a sudden, you're not going to want to do those things anymore that hurt other people. All of a sudden, you're going to see life for what it is, and life is about loving. Life is about humility. Life is about sacrifice. Life is about pouring your life out for other people. That's what's going to make it sweet. Funny story here, when, when Presley was small, I, I kind of took that to an extreme. I didn't use honey, I, I, I used beef jerky. And I would cut up beef jerky, and every time she memorized a scripture, I'd throw one in her mouth like a little seal. I have apologized to my daughter for that. So don't, y'all don't do that, okay? Don't do that illustration. Number three, uh, daily we read the Bible to have communion with Jesus. So, so teenagers and young adults, and for all of us, we don't read the Bible for more information. We don't read the Bible so that we can beat people over the head with the Bible. We don't read the Bible so that we can win arguments, because you can win an argument but lose a person. We don't read the Bible just to read it. We read the Bible so that we can commune with Jesus. Did you know that you can actually love the Bible and not love Jesus? You can actually love the Bible and not love Jesus. As a matter of fact, check this out. This is John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40. Jesus is in a conversation with the religious leaders of his day. Now, I want you to understand, as this is so important, uh, the Pharisees, that word Pharisee means separate ones. There was a group of about 7,000 men, and they felt like their task from God was to help the nation of Israel live all 613 laws found in the Torah, because they believed that if we could live all these laws, then the Messiah would come, he'd kick out the Romans, and Israel would be the promised land it was meant to be. By the age of 12... Teenagers, listen to this. By the age of 12, those who became Pharisees knew the Bible from Genesis to Malachi. Not every word, but they knew the story and the theme of every single book. So you and I would not want to get into a Bible competition with them. They knew the Bible, but they didn't know Jesus. Check this out. Look what Jesus says to them. You poor over the scriptures because you think you have eternal life in them. Friends, the Bible does not give us eternal life. The Bible points us to the one who gives us eternal life. Don't miss that. The whole point of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is that there's one star, one savior, one king, one great love of our lives. And he's saying, I want you to know me. I, I want you to meet with me. I, I want to mold you. I want to shape you. I, I want you to know that all those who are heavy laden and burdened, come to me and I will give you rest because my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Come to me. Come to know me. And look what he says. And they testify about me. So from Genesis to Malachi to Revelation, the scriptures testify about Jesus. Isn't it sad that they spent their whole lives reading the Bible and Jesus was right in front of them and they didn't see him? 
They didn't see him. He wants you and I to see him. He wants you to know his heart. He he wants you to know his compassion. He, He wants you to know his truth. We, we want to develop the holy habit of spending time in Scripture. Um, what, I, what I want to do now is I want to show you a video, and I want to give a platform for it in this. Uh, one of the most expanding things that have helped me mature and grow is like leaving America and seeing other Christians in other places. Going to India was mind-blowing to see these beautiful Christians. It was amazing. Even going to Germany where it's pretty secular to see these incredible Christians and even going to Norway. and I mean, It's just absolutely astonishing, right? And I'm gonna show you a picture of Christian, or, or a video of Christians in China getting their first Bibles, now, by 2060, there's going to be more Christians in China uh, than just about anywhere in the world. And here's one of the reasons why Christianity is growing so fast in countries that are Islamic, in countries that are communist, is there is a hunger for God's word. Now, this isn't to condemn us. This is to encourage us. This is an invitation for us. Take a look at this video. In my office, I probably have three or four physical Bibles at home. I've got Bibles all over the place. My hope and our, my prayer for us is that we would make room for the Lord. I, I mean, isn't it an interesting request? Like, hey, God, I'm gonna make room for you. I get it. There, there's so many things that are going on. We're living in an unprecedented time for us. But Jesus is going, would you, would you make room for me? Would you, would, you, would, you, would you commune with me? Is that too much to ask as your savior, as your king? Like we have to put it in those terms. Like, like Jesus is not just an ordinary person. Like he's the king. He's He's the lover of our souls. He's the one who saves us. He's the one who redeems us. He's the one who allows us to breathe. And he's saying, just make room. And here's what's beautiful. When you and I make room for him, he opens up rooms in our souls that we didn't even know existed. The worship team is is gonna sing. And as they sing, let's let this be our prayer, and then I'm going to be back out and lead us in a time to pray.
I can trust your way Yours is a better way You never ever failed You never ever failed Yours is a better way You never ever failed And you will start now Yours is the better way Help us believe it Help us believe it Increase our faith To believe that your way Is the best way Let faith Rise up in me yeah. Oh, let faith Rise up Oh, heart Believe yeah. Let faith Rise up in me yeah. Oh, let faith Rise up Oh, heart Lord, we recognize that we have uh, cluttered our lives with distractions. This is our heart's cry. And for some of us, you're going, well, pastor, it's not my heart's cry. But we want to hold your faith and say, Lord, make it their heart's cry. That we want to make room for you because you're worthy of it. We, we, we exist for your pleasure. We exist for your will. We exist for your love. We exist for you. You don't exist for us. You're the reason for our existence. Uh, Miss Alana, could you, could you lead us in just a cappella of we want to make room for you? That's our prayer. We're gonna make room. Uh, who I wanna pray for first is for those who are saying, hey, pastor, um, I haven't made room for the word of God and by the Holy Spirit's power, because Jesus has been so good, I wanna begin the holy habit of being shaped by scripture. I wanna, I wanna daily celebrate 
the inspiration of Scripture, just God's Word. I want to daily allow the Spirit of God to form me into the Son of God for the glory of God. Daily, I want to commune with Jesus. I don't want to just read the Bible for information, but for transformation. I want to see His face. I want to experience His grace. I want to know Him. Hey, if that's you, and this is like one of these moments of saying, I'm I'm ready to make a commitment to daily spending time in Scripture, not because I have to, but because I get to and I want to. I would like for you to say this to him. In the silence of your heart, whether if you're here in person or online, Lord Jesus, I want to know you more. Give me an insatiable craving to spend time in your word, to spend time with you, to allow the spirit to shape me and move me. I'm I'm making room for you. Occupy and take over. Next, I wanna pray for those who are watching, those who are physically present, and you're saying, hey, pastor, I don't know Jesus. I don't know him. I know about him, but I I really don't know him the way you described. I'm ready to stop playing religion and I'm ready to start a relationship with him. I'm ready to have him forgive me. I'm ready to have him love me. I'm ready for him to bring me into the family. I'm ready to make room in my soul for him, for him to save me, for him to forgive me. Right now, if that's you, this is, this is your moment. I want you to say this to him. Lord Jesus, save me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died on the cross in my place. You were disgraced to give me grace. You bled and died to forever forgive me. Sins erased and removed. I am loved. And on the third day, when you walked up out of that tomb, I walked out of that tomb with you and into your kingdom. And I thank you for this free gift. In Jesus' name and God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Can we give God a round of applause? Can we give him a round of applause? Can we let him know that, we're, that he's great? Yes. Yes. Uh, before I go into the soul tattoo, um, if you're watching online, I want you to get your camera app on your camera phone, open it up, point it at the TV set, and the connection card will come, all right? And also, here at Transformation Church, on the back of the seats is also our connection card with the QR code. The QR code will show up, point the camera app at it, boom, everything's online. If you prayed, said, hey, I'm going to daily commit to being shaped by Scripture, just let us know. Be like, I'm committing to reading the Bible. And then if you pray to receive Christ, if you made room for Jesus, like Jesus, I'm, I'm, I surrender. I'm giving you my life. Would you check, I prayed to receive Christ. Fill out that connection card. Let us know because in that way, we can know how to better serve you. Family, here's our soul tattoo. We don't read the Bible for information, but for transformation. The action step is cultivate the holy habit of daily scripture reading. Start today. Okay? We gave you some resources that will be on the app and also our website, the U version of the Bible, uh, how to read the Bible, the Bible project. Watch that with your kids and watch how much you learn. They're short, they're creative, and it'll give you a great understanding of the Bible, the Bible story, how we got the Bible. It's epic. Also, a free Bible commentary. Did y'all hear that? Free. Gas, $8,000 a gallon. This free. <laughs> And then we also have some study Bibles for you as well. Uh, We are a people shaped by the book. And that book is the Bible that points to the God who loves us. Can you welcome Pastor Paul and Stephen back up as they close us out? What a great message that challenged us to really develop this holy habit of reading the scriptures and how the scriptures can talk to us about God's love, 
how they can encourage us, how they can challenge us, how they can be a place for us to go to learn more about our family as children of God. And that we're so glad that we were able to do that. Pastor Derwin also shared on the action step to cultivate that holy habit of daily scripture reading. And we do have several resources online and he shared some and thought, Stephen, why don't you share a couple of resources you like? Yeah, so uh, ones that are highlights for me, uh, Pastor Derwin talked about the uh, how to read the Bible with the Bible Project. I think that's really helpful. Uh, and another one that stands out for me personally is there's a study Bible by Dr. Tony Evans, it's someone I grew up listening to from way back in on the radio in my dad's furniture shop. So really encouraged me through, uh, he did through uh, God. So you wanna check it out, it's gonna be on our website, it's also on the app to access it. That's awesome, so make sure you check those out. And also as we read scripture, they encourage us how to live. And one of the ways that we live as Christ followers is that we are people of generosity. And I wanna say on behalf of the team to all of you Transformers, both here and online, thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. It's because of that we get to be the heart, hands, and feet of Jesus, not only locally, but around the world. And so because of your faithfulness, people are experiencing the love of God. So don't forget, as you give, that we have several different ways to give. We enjoy the online giving because it's nice and easy and consistent for us, but choose any of those. There's also the boxes at the doors as you exit today. But let's pray and ask God's blessing on our generosity. Father, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege we have to live lives of generosity. Lord, thank you that as you transform us, as we read your word, as we understand who you are through scriptures, that, Lord, we see that as you have freely given to us, we can be expressions of that giving as well in every area of our lives. Lord, thank you for the generosity from your people, your bride called Transformation Church. And thank you for the lives that are being changed on a regular basis. We pray that you would bless each one. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you would stand with us. We are going to read some scripture. This is just gonna to be to set the tone for our week. We do this at the end of the service. We'll read a passage from Numbers chapter six, verses 24 through 26. And it's really like a prayer over us as we get the week kicked off. So say it with me. May, May the, the Lord, Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. What a great blessing over each of us today. Thank you so much for joining us here at TC and online. And don't forget, we look forward to seeing you again next week when we welcome Christine Kane as our guest speaker. Fantastic. Well, for those who've been here for a while, you, you know how we like to close the service for those who are not, I'm gonna walk you through it. So we do our benediction, which is really a good word, and it's really how we live. So the first thing we say is we say upward, which means that we will love God completely. Then we say inward, which through God's spirit enabling power, we learn to love ourselves correctly. And then finally we say outward, so that we can love our neighbors compassionately. Now, I'm going to point at you. You're going to point at me. And we're going to say, Transformers, roll out, because this is just the huddle. And now it's time to go play the game. game. All right, so on the count of three, three, two, one.